All right, guys, so we're going to watch one of the videos from my Blender Octane 101 guide. It's a full course that I'm basically making to teach you how to use Blender Octane. For those of the members who are in the community, they get immediate access to videos as they're being released because I'm building the course as we go. So if you're interested in that, check the link down below. All right, next, we're going to look at the translation node here. Now, there are a couple of nodes that we can use here. The easiest way to get a transport, uh, transfer, blah, blah, sorry, a transformation node is if you're on any, pretty much almost any type of C drill node or the image node, it will be right here in the quick button here. I can just press that and that's going to by default pop in a 3D transform. Now we also have the option to go shift A and you can come in here to the transform menu and here are the other various ones. The most used are the 3D transform and the 2D transform. Then we also do have a look at transform, rotation, scale, and then transformation value, UV tiling and offset transform, which we'll get in some of those in other ad more advanced videos. But for now, we're going to talk about the 2D transform and the 3D transform. So if I pop in a 2D transform, the 2D transform is basically like it says, it's two dimensional. We have scale. If we select both of these by holding down and dragging, I can uniformly scale. If I want to grab one value, I can scale on one value opposite here. I can scale like that. Again, set that back to zero. And then also on the translation, I can slide here on the X and I can also slide on the Y and then selecting both of these it doesn't really do anything. It's just nonsense, right? But anyways, so that is that. Then we do have a rotation, which it basically rot rotates off the origin here. And that is our rotation. So the 2D transform is extremely simple, like what it says, 2D. Then we have our three-dimensional transform. And basically, we add in another value. Here we do have a rotation order, which I hardly ever use. But if you need it, here it is. This is the rotation order. Then we have rotation here. Again, this is the order of this rotation. So this is Y. Of course, there's no rotation on the Y, no rotation on the X, then rotation on the Z right there. Same here. We have our scale location on the X. And then we have it on the Y. And then on the Z, which this is just a 2D plane, so you don't have any scaling on the 2D plane in the Z depth. And then translation, moving it over, sliding on the X and sliding on the Y, and then again, the Z. Now, the thing that confuses me the most about the whole order of this here, you would think that it says Y, X, Z, rotation order. So I don't think that actually pertains to the order of these sl sliders, but it's a little bit more intricate with uh, as far as rotation values and orders when I think you have other things selected and stuff like that but those would probably be more advanced features and, belie and believe it or not in my whole history of using blender in general I've never ever messed with these but for anybody who knows what they do this is where you will change those values at here so that is our 2d transform and our 3d transform you get to know these because you will be using these a lot next we're going to be looking into projection so if we look down here here is our projection i just have this kind of texture here on top of suzanne head here and the suzanne head by default comes in i think pretty much unwrapped it's got like some uvs or something happening on there so this is pretty much a good model to work with so we can see what's going on here so the first thing if we pop in if you hit the projection preset button here it's automatically going to bring in a uv projection a mesh uv projection and this is basically like your, your normal most common versatile you know projection if this thing has been seems to have been marked and everything this is where you will come in where you've got custom uv sets this is where you would use them and you can also come over here and change the number which also corresponds if you come over here and you come down to your uv maps if i was to make a second uv map here and this is where i would go ahead and do something different then you would want to select that second uv map and come in here uv2 one or two or three this is where we go ahead and select all those different maps there so that is pretty much just your straight projection now i should show you where these are if you come in shift a we got projections here are all the different types of projections we have i'm not going to go through every single one just the majors and again if we scroll down to projection mess uv here it is pretty much the same thing so best use case for scenarios for this one will be for models that uh where you need complete control over like you know how the texture is going to be applied like you know characters vehicles complex 3d shapes and stuff like that the next one we're going to look at is going to be the box projection here is our box projection we'll go ahead and plug that into here and then you can definitely see how it changes things up again the box projection is just like what it says a cubic projection that applies to the uh the texture here uh best use case scenario though, scenarios for this you know things that are boxy cubic objects objects that don't require perfect you know texture alignment such as like buildings and you know create simple things like that pretty much that also i should mention if you right click on this i think is it right click no if you press u on your keyboard Actually, go into edit mode, select everything, select your faces, and you can't see mine because I have that. And if you press U, here are uh, 
your unwrapping. So you can unwrap smart on you have light map. These are all your, your options here. The cubic projection cylinder, sphere, project from view, project from view bounds, mark seams, clear seams right here. So if you want to mark your seams, you can do that here. So that's how you would do that. You have to be in edit mode because if I select jumped out and then if I hit you, nothing happens. So make sure you're in edit mode with whatever you want to do. You have your faces or your edges selected. And then if I guess if you hold on, if you actually just blah, 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 blah. If you just tap on one of the edges here and then you can come on here and then you will go mark seam here and you can go ahead and mark the seam and clear the seam. So here is our box projection. Again, another thing you can do here is you have the normal box transformation. You can click on that and that pops in our 3D transform. And then again, I can go ahead and rotate and I have complete control here of that happening. Now we see we do have our 3D version. So here is the scaling also being affected. Again, if we uniformly scale, translation, that all affects. Then you also have this other little slot here, coordinates. We're working on an object space coordinates or you can select to world or you can, this will be for uh, IES lights. These are something a little bit different, normal spaces. So that's the box projection. Next one we would have from here, we go back in, we're gonna take a look at the spherical projection, which is another basics one that gets used quite often. Spherical projection, just like it says, it is for spherical objects. We go ahead and plug that in, and there is the spherical, the spherical one. Again, if I go ahead and pop in the transform, that does give me the rotation and the control on that, and you can move it around and customize it like you want there. Again, we pretty much know that is good for use for things with spherical. We also next would have our cylinder. We come back to projection and cylinder projection. Pop that in there. Same thing. And the same format works here. You know, moving that in and controlling all of those variables. So you can do that. Another one, which I'm going to go ahead and skip a few because pretty much there's one that's really important to the next two are kind of important. This one here, if we come into projection and which one was it? Okay, here's our perspective, our perspective projection. And like a lot of times we would use this one for mapping, like if we're doing some type of projection, like if we're doing a camera projection, you would probably want to best use for when you're trying to create an effect like a projector or again, camera mapping, when we want the texture to align to a certain perspective from the camera angle, especially like I do a lot of VFX stuff so that where this camera or this projection one will come in. And then another one, which is commonly used for many people coming from cycles, they're used to using the object. What is it here? I haven't been playing in cycles for a moment here. Let me jump over and come into Octane. And if we come down to, I think if I actually press on here, Control T. Okay, so the object one right here. A lot of people use this. When I used to do uh, cycles a lot, I use the object. Now, the closest thing to object in Octane will be our triangular projection, which basically combines, let me pop that in here, a triangular projection, right here, triangular projection. Now, when we plug this in right off the bat, nothing happens, it kind of disappears because there's a little bit more to this node. But for our triangular projection, basically this combines three planar projections. It, it takes the X, the Y, and the Z axis. Okay, and it puts those together for some more smooth blending for complex objects that, you know, without needing to UV unwrap them. It was, these like work best probably for things like, you know, organic, more complex shapes where UV wrapping is, you know, a little bit hard, such as rocks or organic models. But let me quickly show you how to set that up. So you need the triplanar projection here, and then you shift A, and then I honestly don't know where it's at because I just search everything. So I would just go try, and here it is, the try, okay, it's in octane textures, mapping, try, triangular map okay now we need this this goes in between our texture here again it has a texture output here it has a texture output right so we drop that in between and literally what you see what happened is we're just going to take our texture and put and just map it to these different axes here so let's kind of give ourselves a little bit of room here we have our positive x i mean negative x texture so if i plug that in here so here in this case x that would be negative x or just a regular x positive is on this side right so obviously if we go to negative x it should be on the opposite side and then it is now it's being projected on the opposite side so this is kind of like the object version of projection again on the y y negative z and z negative so now we have it completely engulfed now one thing i think this which is kind of cool with this unlike the cycles version here you can kind of see we've got our line here and you can see it's a little sus, a little sus right look at that but this thing gives us an option to try to blend that blend that angle right so this is nothing right this would be no blend or we can kind of try to just add a little bit of blend in there to try to hide that edge right which you know it may work in some scenarios and may not work in others here is our coordinates for world coordinates or for object coordinates and then what i think is really nice is if you come in here and take our blend cubic transform Take that, pop this in here. Now we can start to move these seams around a little bit. Like you can see how we're moving stuff around a little bit. 
and move the Z up. We're kind of just like shifting stuff. So depending on your texture, you might be able to just kind of hide and shift things around. And then again, we can scale this up and down. And of course the rotation works there too. I almost like hide that line. Check it out. Like, like right there, you can see we got some issues going on with a little bit of rotation, maybe a little bit of rotation here on the side here to clean this up a little bit and a little Z rotation. So you can see that that's quite powerful. I mean, look at that a little bit of stuff going on there, but overall, I think that looks great. Like as far as trying to hide seams and things like that, see here, if this bugs you a little bit, then you can come back in here again and then start trying to just touch things up where it needs to be touched. So that is probably one of my most favorite setups here. The, the uh, triangular, <laughs> triangular projection. So that is that. And then I think what other ones do we have that these are those are like the major ones that I use almost all the time. If we get back in here, we'll probably get into these other ones in more advanced videos later. But another one that I use a lot is the X, Y, the X, Y, Z to UVW transform. So here now I got this plugged in the X, Y, Z to UVW projection. And you can see here, it kind of stretches these side faces here. It's a little bit different. Uh, this be the best, the best way to explain this, actually, I had to look this up. So ChatGPT helped me out on this one here. So literally for the best use for this would be on um, procedural materials. For example, since the X, Y, Z to UVW coordinates, uh, convert 3d coordinates directly it will work well with procedural textures that are used to that are used that are calculated based on the object's position okay and that's according to chat gpt um it works good on non-organic objects solid textures when you have a texture and you don't need it to be mapped through uvs or based on a 3d volume or xyz to uvw will help you to create more consistent mapping Thank you, ChatGPT. When you start getting into making procedural, a lot of procedural materials, and a lot of the tutorials that I follow for Cinema 4D guys, we use this XYZ pro projection a lot. Not necessarily too much on image base, but more when we start getting into, you start using the procedural texture stuff, um, we've used it a lot. So just if you're, if you're getting crazy with procedural stuff and you're just not getting the projection that you need, this will be probably the node that you might want to look into and uh, this might help you out a lot, definitely. I will get back to this one in later videos. Definitely once we start making some more advanced materials, you will see this this node here appear quite often. So that'll be it for the projections. Those are the, the major ones that I use at the moment. In later videos, and the more advanced videos, we'll start to break down some of the other ones and what they particularly do. But those are pretty much the major ones that I typically use all the time. If you guys want to watch more of these videos down below, check the link for my Blender Octane course. It's in my Blender Octane community. There you can get immediate access. And for the next seven days, I'll knock five bucks off so jump on that, get in there, finish watching some more of these videos and get access to the newest videos as soon as they are finished cooking from me. Patrick LeVar, catch you guys in the next one. Take a look at this video. Peace.